Good day, fellow investors. Today we're going to discuss two really, really good businesses that have rewarded shareholders really well over the last two decades. Those businesses are completely different. Amazon is a growth stock. eBay is more of a value investment, but operate in the same niche and are very interesting to compare. I have decided to look into the sector a little bit to look what's out there to look at Amazon to look at eBay because eBay is the largest position of Seth Klarman's Baupost group. If you don't know who Seth Klarman is, he's the author of The Margin of Safety, one of the best value investment books out there, managing the Baupost group for already 30 years, 40 years almost now. And he is a value investor, which means that he looks for risk first and then leaves the up upside to whatever happens positively. But if you eliminate risk, then you are a value investor. And then, as he says, by buying at prices sufficiently below underlying value to allow for human error, bad luck, extreme volatility in a complex world that we are definitely living in, then you invest with the margin of safety and you reach your goal. So we'll compare eBay and Amazon and you'll see that both have a margin of safety, which might surprise you. Let's start with the analysis. This is what we're going to discuss a little bit, uh, focus on the business, the market capitalization, investing risk and rewards, the fundamentals, the data, and then we should get out with a good comparison on what is best for your portfolio, whether at these levels it is something for you, both good businesses, both good investments, but you have to see at what level it's a perfect fit for your portfolio. If we look at eBay's stock price over the last two decades, it has been very, very volatile, but over the last 10 years, it has rewarded shareholders pretty well and has also benefited from the COVID jump recently. However, this chart is here omitting a very important thing which is the spin-off of PayPal. So eBay was owning PayPal and they spun it off in 2015 and Seth Klarman very interestingly was buying eBay in 2014 and then he sold in 2015. So eBay yes over the last five years didn't do much except for pretty volatile times. Seth Klarman started buying here, bought more, bought more, and now he enjoys a good position. However, PayPal did really, really well over the last years, so it's up around six times, which is exactly also what Amazon did in the same period. Of course, staggering growth for Amazon and the company keeps growing and will likely keep growing for a long period of time given the scale and efficiency efficiencies it's reaching so again a very very good investment however if we look at google trends ebay was the dominating force before 2012 2010 amazon really started growing fast and eBay started declining. PayPal, constant growth over time. But here is when the difference, everybody was using eBay, researching eBay more, especially online, and then really Amazon took off. And this is how value investments emerge. So we have a business, a value investing business that's not that trendy as Amazon, that has seen declining market share over time. However, that declining market share doesn't mean that it doesn't make any money. It makes money, it's free cash flow positive. And then as the market doesn't like it, it becomes cheaper, cheaper and cheaper when a value investor like Seth Klarman picks it up. Very interesting how these things evolve. On the contrary, with Amazon, what is priced in? According to the analysis I have seen on the market, most analysts expect growth of 22% for the coming five years, 22% per year, which is huge growth. And that is what's priced in into the current market cap 
of 1.6 trillion dollars. That's a huge market cap, but the expectations are 22% growth per year. If Amazon grows faster, then the stock will go higher, higher, and higher. If Amazon sticks to 22% growth and the expectations are longer for that growth, then the stock will keep going up at 22% per year. If growth slows down, then the stock might crash. That's the risk and reward for Amazon. On the business side, on the business perspective, it's very interesting how eBay with 180 million users is just 2.2% of Amazon, which is really ridiculous in comparison to what it was 15 years ago. However, the market capitalization is there and when it comes to eBay, the risks are business decline, they have sold everything that wasn't really the marketplace business, we'll discuss it in a second, competition coming in, new platforms, bad investments that can be made into something that doesn't work, the new payment system uh, with IDEN developed, etc. So that's eBay, they need fixing, they need catalysts, they need faster growth. They are trying to go into niche business from refurbished things on their marketplace to scale what they have. And consequently, since e PayPal was spun off, uh, revenues have grown, but at a slow and steady pace. Expectations are for revenue growth of around 7% going forward over the next 5-10 years hopefully if they manage to keep doing what they are doing. However, if we look at cash flows, those have been significantly positive, around 2.5 billion, 2 billion if we deduct the classifieds that have been sold, which is very, very good. So if we look at the cash flows going forward, we are at 2.2, 2.3 billion with a little bit more growth thanks to Corona and online purchasing, we can hit 2.5 billion. 2.5 billion in free cash flows on the market capitalization of 34 billion is a 7% free cash flow yield. Plus, there are active buyers growing 183 million. That's a huge number if they can scale that. But on one side, we have safety in the free cash flows. And on the other side, we have potential in the active buyers. Plus, they have sold the classified ads business for 9.2 billion for 2.5 billion in cash and 540 million shares of Adavinta. The shares went up already. So this is already a 2.5 billion gain and something that we have to deduct from the market capitalization. So if I deduct 9 billion from the market capitalization, then we are already at 26, which gives us a 10% free cash flow yield. Something to keep in mind when it comes to eBay. Also, eBay selling StubHub for a 4 billion deal or also getting cash for lowering debt, doing buybacks, still planning on doing buybacks, rewarding shareholders. That's what a value investment does. But we'll discuss more later the price connotations and the risk and reward of the investment. When it comes to Amazon, we already said it's what's priced in, what kind of growth is priced in. This is 10x growth over the last 10 years, that's staggering growth, that's amazing growth, that's incredible and shows how good of a business Amazon is. The position it created gives it a huge mode that allows for more scaling, more growth. And it all will depend, your investment returns from Amazon will all depend from the growth rate. But something more important is, okay, that growth, is it profitable growth? And yes, it is. And we, if we look at operating cash flows for Amazon, we are at 55 billion. If we then deduct from the 55 billion, the 30 billion in capital expenditures, I get to free cash flows of 25 billion. However, let's say that half of these 30 billion spent in capital investments is for growth, not for sustaining, and just to sustain the business as is. 
they need 15 billion. This would mean that the free cash flows of Amazon are 40 billion dollars. 40 billion dollars on a 1.6 trillion market capitalization give a free cash flow yield of around 3.5 percent if I'm not mistaken. However, what is important is the growth as we said. If Amazon grows at 22 percent then free cash flows in 2028 would be close to 200 billion. That would give it a double digit free cash flow yield in 2028. So the stock price would likely follow the growth in the free cash flows. If there is 27% growth, at some point it will stop growing like Apple and it will become a dividend a stock, a buyback stock, a cash cow. But until that doesn't happen, then it's a growth stock and stays a growth stock. If growth is a little bit slower, let's say just 10%, really unlikely that Amazon grows just 10% given the current growth, the potential, the entering into new businesses constantly seeking that growth. But let's say that profitability declines because, because of the competition, then free cash flows would be only 85 billion in 2028 for a price to free cash flow of 20, which would be high for just 10% growth. And then it all depends, okay, what will the growth be beyond 2028, for example? So the main risk or reward and reward when it comes to Amazon is the growth rate. I have discussed this more in detail with a tool called the Delta of the Delta, how to analyze growth stocks when I discussed Visa as an example and you can use that tool also to check on Amazon and how a change in the growth rate, not in the growth or no growth, just a change in the growth rate impacts the valuation of such businesses. For now, if we look at Amazon's valuation, the price earnings ratio is 90. That's very high, but I prefer focusing on the cash flow yield that we said 40 billion adjusted cash flows, which gives 3.5%. And then if you compare it to Amazon, it's not even that high because Amazon's is 7.2%, okay, 10% if we deduct the classified ads business. However, with 22% growth, Amazon will reach eBay's in a few years. We'll catch up with eBay's free cash flow yield in a few years if the growth, as said, stays there. All the other numbers, okay, they have a different accounting uh, setup. So Amazon's gross margin is much lower, but this is just a marketplace. So different revenue recognition. The debt minimal with Amazon, a little bit more significant with eBay, but given the cash coming in, the net debt is much, much lower. Focused on dividends, especially buybacks, still 700 million to make available to make buybacks, so more rewarding of shareholders. However, revenue, huge difference, net income also not that much into price earnings ratios, but in potential and growth, which is key. So when it comes to an investment conclusion, I've put this into my table and okay, bad situation. I don't think Amazon will grow at 10% in the worst case scenario. I think Amazon will grow at 15% worst case scenario, regulation, higher competition, whatever you might throw at them. And if they grow at just 15%, then the price earnings ratio will also go down. So I estimate a 7% return in the bad case scenario. Likely 15% if they keep growing at 20%, slowing down a little bit somewhere down the road. And then great 22% if they just keep growing at 22%. And then further beyond 2025, 2027, 22% is still what is expected. So it's clearly a growth categorization. The main risk for Amazon is slower than expected growth. When it comes to eBay, market cap, okay, 35 billion, 
deduct 9 billion from the Vinta stake, so we are at 26 billion, which gives a free cash flow yield of 9%, very good, but the marketplace business, will it get eaten up by somebody else if Amazon does the same? How sticky are their customers? They say 180 million customers, active users there on a quarterly basis, but I don't know whether we have seen the trends in Google, whether that is something sticky. So that's another risk, uh, improving operations, keeping cash flows, etc. Etc. From an investing perspective, I would say those are good businesses now offering likely returns around 10-15%. And of course, as we said at the beginning, value investing, margin of safety, the lower the prices with good businesses as Amazon and eBay, then your returns will be higher and your risk is lower. That's value investing. That's what I do Personally, I research stocks and if you want to see more of my researches, please check my stock market research platform and the links also to the Visa growth videos are all in the description below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.